Hello everybody, my name is Nicole Elliott. I'm a technical analyst and private investor. And last week on this channel, um, I warned you that several markets were in disarray and to be extremely careful. I thought I'd continue this theme, um, perhaps with markets that are not quite, quite so obvious. And I've chosen the um, gold market as my first chart. It's a long-term monthly chart. And as you can see, from the beginning of 2019, it has been trading higher in fairly neat steps. That's quite a good thing. If you want a sort of steady bull run, you want it to go up a step and then consolidate onto the tread of the staircase. That's precisely what we've been doing. And we're ever so close to the record high. Uh, when I last looked this morning, uh, Spot Gold was trading at $1,717. And the record high was several years ago at 1920. So it has become slightly more unstable in March. You can see that candle um, with a big um, uh, wicks on either end of it. Now, what really shocked me this week, I was absolutely devastated, is one of the oldest gold bullion dealers has shut up shop. This is a firm, uh, Makata. Um, so they've shut up shop today. They were one of the few market makers on the London Metal Bullion Association, Bullion Market Association. They were one of the few. So now we're down to just 11 market makers there. This is really bad because a month ago, another veteran gold dealer, the Dutch ABN AMRO Bank, also closed down its bullion desk. I mean, they've been going for over a century. You know, so these are really major moves. And what I can't understand is that the demand for gold ETFs reached a new record high this quarter, understandably with other markets that are in disarray. Um, today, the World Gold Council has published some of its figures. I think the net inflow was something like $16 billion, nearly all of it are down to ETF demand because jewellery demand has slumped. So you've got this complete disconnect between the major ultra professional dealers copping out of the market, the price being high by historical standards, um, ETF demand, I mean, out of the spectrum. I mean, the biggest e US ETF has something like uh, $30 billion under management. That's just one ETF. And yet, and yet, and yet, on um, New York's COMEX exchange, the open interest in the uh, all futures contracts that, that they trade, the open interest um, has collapsed this year, absolutely collapsed um, from something like 800,000 contracts to 500,000. So what I'm going to suggest to investors, and I'm sure lots of you probably have or are interested in ETFs, I would look very, very carefully at the fine print to see exactly who stands behind what you bought and how they operate their hedges, whether it's physical or not. My second chart is another one that's in disarray this, this month, really, last couple of months. And this is the price of lean hogs uh, in Chicago. Now, what's really sort of uh, mucked everything up here as well, and you can see the collapse and then the uh, almost uh, uh, reversal um, in the price. This is cents per pound, it's a daily chart. And what it is, is the big meat packer, uh, Tyson um, Foods, which is now owned by a Brazilian firm, JBS, they've had to close some of their meat packing plants uh, because of an outbreak of coronavirus in their staff. And Donald Trump is so furious about this. This week, he threatened to use the Defense Production Act and force the plants to reopen with or without sick members of staff. I mean, this is just awful. It's too cruel for words. Anyway, the price is up um, from historically terribly cheap levels, which makes sense. Do you know what I mean? If we're not going out to shop, we're not going to stock up on too much bacon, are we? And anyway, you can't have bacon, lettuce and tomato sandwiches from Subway anymore. So there you go. It all doesn't make sense to me at all. I'll be back next week, and I hope we can find some other interesting charts for you to look at. See you then.